when you stepped outside of this world, it's, it's really crazy to go back. When you look at this content, you realize that that has absolutely no value and you will be even surprised why you used to be drawn to this content because you will be more in the realm of uh, real life and real colors and real faces and real bodies. Hi, this is Broccoli Propaganda and in my last video, which I made about two years without alcohol, I promise you that I'm going to make another video about dopamine, which is related to social media. Two years ago, in February 2020, just when the pandemic hit the world, I have decided to completely deactivate and delete my social media accounts and I have never gone back since. And I have experienced so many benefits since then and it changed my life in so many positive ways that I decided to talk about it. Okay, so uh, everyone kind of knows that social media is taking a lot of our time. So one report says that time spent on social media for 2021 reveals that we are spending an average 3 hours 40 minutes on mobile daily. And from that time, two hours and 20 minutes is spent on social media, according to Statista. So obviously you know that because even if you just look at your phone and look at your screen time, the phone will tell you how much time you are spending on social media on a daily basis. So obviously you gain time to do other things. And of course in 2020, this is exactly what happened with me because when I stopped using social media and need to put this time somewhere else and I decided that I will instead read more books. I bought a Kindle and on my way to work I would read all these books that I had on my list for a long time. But what is important is when you gain more time by quitting social media that you do not re reinvest this time in another activity that is as dopamine stimulating as social media. Because if you do then you will end up uh, in the same situation you, will, you were before and you will not experience the other benefits that I will talk about in this video. So one of the other benefits that I noticed almost straight away is that you are able to focus more on doing things that are hard. And I already mentioned this benefit in my two years without alcohol video because it's also related to dopamine. So when you are not hijacking your reward pathways with overstimulating it with dopamine release. So I already mentioned reading, but I simply just started to enjoy working and doing things that would benefit my life in general. I started to take much more action to improve my life. And this is what's gonna happen to you because how many things you have on your list that you know you should do to improve your life or even you might want to do them, so you have the desire to do them, but somehow you end up not doing them. Well, if you quit dopamine stimulating activities such as social media or alcohol, you will have so much more energy and motivation to do these things. When you're not overstimulating yourself with dopamine, it's easier for you to do things that actually are meaningful in your life and that will bring you forward. By taking action to improve your life, you will gain confidence. And by gaining confidence, you will take even more action to improve your life. So in 2020, when I quit social media, which happened several months after I quit drinking alcohol, and I think it's also related. The first thing I did was I wanted to improve my work situation. So I was not happy at the job that I was doing at the time, and I decided to take immediate action to find a better job, which was better paid, better engaging. I wanted to work for a company that I I'm really proud of working on the product that we are making right after I quit social media. So I think I quit in February and like towards uh, March, I already had a CV that I completely updated with a, a specialist that was specialized on, on, on CVs. And I started applying for jobs regularly and writing cover letters. And I felt extremely motivated to do this and very focused. It was actually not difficult at all. And I managed to find a job within one and a half months. And in May, I already signed a contract. And all this to say is that I don't think that I would have been able to do it so well and so fast if I would have been still 
wasting time on social media. And I also would have felt less motivated to do so. So you do feel much more capable of taking control of your life. Another thing that I also did in 2020, because I felt confident about myself after quitting social media and feeling like I can take action much easier, is that I took control over my finances. I made a plan for my finances. And at the time I was going through a difficult uh, period of my life because of some, let's say, some personal situation that required me to take legal action and it also required me to spend quite a lot of time and money into, into this situation. So I knew that if, I, if my focus was somewhere else, I would probably not manage it as well. And managing money was extremely important for me in this time because I knew that I wouldn't be able to just afford life if I would not take control of my finances. In 2020, I managed to do a huge jump into how I manage money and I learned a lot from different uh, blogs and books about how to manage money. And I don't think that I would have taken the time and the focus if I still were using social media. Another benefit that I experienced and, and that you will experience as well is that you will be less distracted at work and because you're less distracted, you will produce better results. And if you produce better results, then you have higher chances of advancing in your career if this is what you want and getting a higher salary. So what do, you, what do I mean by that? Is that you, when you are working on something at work, let's say you need to work on a project, at some point, your brain craves distraction, right? So at some point after, uh, let's say, 90 minutes of focused work, your brain is like, ah, I, want some, I want to do something else. And so if you have social media, naturally what happens, you pick up your phone, you look at Instagram, you look at TikTok, whatever social media you like, and your brain has this dopamine release and then you feel good and then you think you will come back to work and continue. Because your brain is distracted, it's so much harder to come back to focus mode. What I noticed is that my phone just became really boring to me. So even though I would have the habit of picking it up after some focused work, I would pick it up and I would look at it and I would realize that there's nothing really on it except WhatsApp or checking the weather. And honestly, there's only that much you can do on WhatsApp if nobody's writing you. So I would just go back to work. And then after a while, I even didn't have the habit of picking up my phone anymore. And I started just leaving it in the other room. And eventually what it does is that you are simply able to focus on your work tasks much longer. And even if your brain wants to get distracted, then you get a coffee and you look out of the window and suddenly you start to have this solution in your head or this creative idea of how to solve a certain problem that you have at work. And then you go back to your computer and you are even more motivated to continue working. I noticed that I produce so much more at work since I don't have social media and it helps you progress in your career. So this leads, leads me to another benefit. You will have creative solutions to your problems because you will be able to spend time alone with your thoughts. Usually if let's say you're taking a break or you're taking the tram or you're waiting in line or something like that. Usually if you have social media, this is a, a cue for you to go and check Instagram or check Twitter or whatever. But if you don't have social media, first you're gonna have a feeling of being, dis being uncomfortable, but then in a few moments you will start uh, drifting in your thoughts and you might start thinking about, let's say, this problem that you have at work. Like I work at tech, for example, so some of the problems have to do with like automations or things not working the way I want them. And then when I'm just distracted and thinking, let's say having a coffee and I'm looking out the window, suddenly I get this idea like, oh my God, this is why it's not working. This is why I couldn't uh, put it live. And now I know how to fix this. And then <laughs> it just gives you creative solutions much easier. If I would have spent time or scrolling through Instagram in my coffee break, this idea would have not come to my head because I'm just like polluting my head with content from other people. And um, not only work-wise, but also other things, let's say 
you have some problem in your life and you don't know how to fix this, just being by yourself and letting yourself think without getting distracted will provide these creative solutions. So that's a really huge benefit of not using, using social media. By the way, if you are trying to quit dopamine stimulating activities such as social media, click on the like button and this way other people who are in your situation might see this video as well and it, they might find it helpful. Another benefit I noticed, which some people might argue that it's not a benefit, but <laughs> what I noticed is that uh, you will discover really who your real friends are. When you are using social media, you have this feeling of being connected to everyone. You, what I did enjoy about social media at the time, and I, I must say I don't miss it, but I did enjoy it, is checking stories of my friends. I have uh, lived in five different countries, so my friends are kind of scattered everywhere, and this was an opportunity for me to keep track of their lives, of their children, where they are traveling, what are they are doing, and I really enjoyed that because it allowed me to have this connection with my friends. So in the first weeks and months of not being on social media, I really couldn't tell what my friends were doing. I had no idea what's going on in their lives. So in order to actually know what's happening with them, I needed to write them a WhatsApp message and ask them, how are you? How are you doing? But my friends were under the assumption that I was completely up to date with their life. Just to give you an example, I texted a friend of mine who uh, lives abroad and I asked her how was her Easter and how was the egg hunting for her kids and she just told me well I posted everything on Instagram just look there <laughs> and I was like you know I don't have Instagram anymore so I really would appreciate if you share some photos with me on WhatsApp and I would really love to see how you enjoyed Easter. Another example was with my friend who was traveling at the time so I gave her a call to see how how she was doing and she said oh you know like this and then she keeps talking about this dog and I have no idea what this dog is I'm like what dog and she's like well you know the puppy the, the puppy that we adopted I'm like did you adopt a puppy and she's like yeah like didn't you see this on Instagram so it's like people assume that you are up to date but you're not but then people get used to the fact that you don't have Instagram and then the in interesting thing happens is that only really true friends that, that want to connect with you in real life, they really stay your friends. So you really see who your real friends are and you kind of forget uh, about other random social interactions you had, even though they could have been valuable at the time or you've had fun or you had good relationships with these people, but eventually you know, they forget about you because you're not on social media and you forget about them. And if you don't keep this real life contact, then they are no longer in your life. And that's also okay. But yeah, the not having social media really filtered the social contacts you might have. But then, you know, when people congratulate you for your birthday, then you know that person really knows your birthday because it's in their calendar or something and not because the Facebook told them to congratulate you with your birthday. So I found this was actually pretty cool. But if you are somebody who really likes to be surrounded by people and have a lot of friends, this might be causing some anxiety if you feel like you're losing contact with people. And I can understand that. But it's again up to you to really keep contact with the people that you care about and you love and maybe schedule some real life meetings, even though it was, how to say pandemic without saying pandemic? <laughs> well, right. This brings me to our next benefit is that you will not have a fear of missing out. Although some people might disagree with me, but I have this feeling that when you are on social media, you are constantly exposed to other ways of life or other travel destinations or other cafes or food you could eat. So basically you're constantly exposed of what is available out there and so you might have a fear of missing out because you have uh, other engagements, you are working or you're doing something else and then other people are having fun and so you're like, oh my god, I, yeah, I wish I could have been there. But if you don't have social media, you don't have this comparison spectrum. You really start to experience in real life you only see what you see with your own eyes, you go outside, you see how people live, 
and you don't have constant kind of like look what I'm doing which you have on Instagram instead you just have people with normal lives and normal problems and also normal highlights and this leads me to the next benefit is that you will stop comparing yourself to unrealistic lifestyles there are always people who make more money than you. There are always people that are more beautiful than you. There are always people that are more fit than you, that have a better life than you, and so on. And especially on Instagram, it seems that everyone is having a better life than you. But when you don't have social media, you can only compare yourself to people that are, have realistic lifestyle around you. And in the end, it's always better to not compare yourself at all to anyone. I mean, of course we do, we are social animals, but it is much easier to gain confidence in yourself and compare, start comparing yourself to how you used to be. And especially when you start taking action because you're having this dopamine detox, because you find real, like, more boring things, more stimulating, and you suddenly start improving your life and then you can compare yourself to how you used to be and say to yourself, hey, I've done good this year and I've achieved so much and I'm so much better than I used to be instead of comparing yourself to lives of others. And this leads me to the next um, benefit is that you are gonna be spending much less money. I mean, I think we experienced this in the pandemic already that we have consumed less. I don't actually have statistics of this, so I might be wrong, but I had this feeling, at least in my entourage and in my surroundings, is that people started buying much less stuff. And I know that there are things in my closet that were inspired by influencers on social media, on Instagram, women who have, let's say, a personal style that I admired. And I would look at these photos and I would say like, oh my God, look at this skirt or look at these shoes and I absolutely need this. And then I would end up buying things and I would completely justify this to myself. But I have barely bought anything since the last two years. And I remember one time, me and my friend were walking into the shop and I saw these shoes there and I had like this cue, you know, like, oh, I need the shoes. And then I told myself, why do, why do I need the shoes? Because you're becoming much more conscious with your thought when you don't use social media as well, because you're kind of like more reflecting and spend time thinking. So, so I looked at the shoes and I'm like, why, why, why? And then I remembered that one of the last trends, let's say on Instagram before I quit was this kind of high, high, just under the knee boots. And that's why I had this in intention to buy, it, buy them. And the moment I caught myself having this thought, I was like, no. So I went out of the shop and I ended up buying nothing. And in general, you are not influenced by all this stuff you see on social media, like how many product placements we have to deal with when we are scrolling on Instagram. It's insane. And you just buy things that you really need, like your jeans have gone out of order or, you know, you just need, you feel like it's, there's real necessity and then you buy this. So yeah, you will spend much less money. And then this money that you didn't spend, you can reinvest in like ETS or your pension fund or something like this, because you will have much more control over your life and then you will feel what is really valuable and what's not. Another benefit that I have experienced and I know would resonate with some of you. I have some friends who have quit social media for several days and they have experienced the same thing is that you will have more control of what enters uh, your brain, what content enters your brain. Because we know that algorithm kind of shapes what we see and based on our previous likes or based on the previous content that we have seen, we will keep seeing similar content, right? And especially during the um, pandemic, there was a risk that you would keep seeing things that would just reconfirm your biased opinion um, about certain topic and then you will just kind of like keep reinforcing this idea with yourself. Social media influences what we think a lot and so of course we are always influenced by others so even if we don't use social media we are influenced by the books we read, by what other people say and so on. However, when you cut the social media feed 
you will most likely choose what you want to read instead of being pushed into what you want to read. So if you don't have the, the influence from social media, you, if you want to read something, you're going to search for what you want to read and you're not going to be kind of forced into reading something that you didn't choose to consume. I see it also from with some of my friends that are still on social media and how you know they keep sharing things with me that they see on social media and I ask myself would they know this information if social media didn't exist would they actually engage into this new um, topic or uh, theory if social media didn't tell them that they that's what they should care about and I find that probably one of the most valuable benefits of not using social media is that you are able to really control your opinion, not, not control, but that you are much more confident about the fact that your opinion is really your opinion and not an opinion that was influenced by your feed. Of course, we, are, we all are biased, so it's, it's very hard to know what is really your opinion and where you're influenced, but let's say that you have, if you don't have social media, you have much more control of what you read and what you consume because it's by choice and not by randomness of algorithm. So another benefit of not having social media is better immune system because you have better sleep when you don't consume social media. And social media has also ne a negative impact on your mental health and mental health and your immune system are correlated. So there are studies um, that prove that when you are depressed, then it has an effect on your immune system and how likely you are to get sick. So for example, happier people get sick much less and sleep also has a direct uh, influence on your immune system. So if you get enough sleep and if it's in uninterrupted sleep, then your immune system is stronger. So just for that, quitting social media is worth it. And the last benefit is that you might actually lose weight by not having social media. Why is that? Well, how many of us tend to scroll on our feed when we are eating or watching television when we are eating or anyhow being somehow distracted when we are eating? We, I don't know a lot of people who eat just alone in silence by themselves. There is research that shows that undistracted eating has positive effect on your weight. When we are distracted, we tend to eat up to 300 calories more. Because when we are distracted, we eat faster and we eat longer. There's such thing as meaningful eating. It's when you put all your attention into what you eat, into the taste of the food, into chewing, into really experiencing the food in your mouth and this has shown to have weight loss benefits. So if you're one of those people who scrolls on social media while eating, try to eat while just doing nothing, just eating. And it's gonna be really intimidating at first because our brain is so used to being distracted but really enjoy your food and you will see that you will end up eating less. Another thing why social media has a negative effect on our relationship with food is by the way that food is portrayed on social media. There has been a study made that I will link down below on how the most appealing food has of course the, most, the highest engagement rate and likes and the most appealing food tends to be the food high in saturated fat. And Saturated fat is the, one of the biggest reasons why we have disease and also weight gain. We're not going to go into detail about this right now, but food that is like really juicy and kind of fatty and kind of you can almost see the shine on the food and hashtag food porn is there. <laughs> the the uh, likelihood of it being liked and shared is the highest one. So you will end up seeing food that is, has the most caloric density. And if you see food with the most caloric density, this will produce craving to eat this, even if you're not hungry. And so you might just grabbing that bag of chips or, or ordering something online with a very high fat content. 
so yeah, social media and food has more to do with each other than you thought, probably. So now, where does it leave us? You might say to yourself, okay, all these benefits, it's great, but how do I really do this? Won't I actually miss social media? I must admit that I justified using social media for a long time, and when I quit social media, some of my friends reacted in a way like, oh yeah, but I need it because I need it for work, or because it, my dip business depends on it, or I would not get requests for etc, etc. So you might justify it in a lot of ways, or you might say, oh well, but I'm getting, I'm only subscribed to really positive content on social media. I'm subscribed to all this kind of like positive quotes and inspiring quotes and meditation articles. But the thing is, the thing is, this positive quote might inspire you, but then you will keep scrolling and nothing is more inspiring than taking action. And you have more likelihood of taking action and actually taking control of your life and changing your life if your brain is in chemical balance. And what I mean by that is that if your reward pathways are not hijacked with constant, constant stimulation. So what you need to do to really improve your life is to stop activities that are dopamine stimulating and this would restore your brain chemistry. There's plenty of content on this topic so just put in YouTube dopamine detox and you will find plenty of stuff on this topic. But this is a real deal. If you want to take positive action in your life and not feel demotivated and kind of like disengaged with your own life, stop using social media and just deactivate it completely, delete it from your phone and your phone will become really boring. Just don't install any games because if you're gonna install games then it's just kind of like not a win-win. Um, and you might just enjoy very simple things in life such as going to the forest, making a fire, taking a walk. Just drinking a coffee might seem much more entertaining <laughs> than it used to be. And going to bed early will suddenly take another meaning and you will wake up early, feel energized and just feel like you have control over your life. So if you want to test how it feels to be without social media, just deactivate or let's say if you want to keep your account, just delete it from your phone and block it on your computer with their special programs that can block access to specific uh, sites. Just remove social media from your life for at least 30 days. and when you come back, like if you ever come back to social media after this, you will see how crazy it is. Like sometimes when my friends, like let's say I have a conversation in a cafe with a friend of mine and I see her constantly grabbing her phone and just like scrolling and she doesn't even consciously like register this. It's just like we're having a conversation. She just takes her phone and starts checking her Instagram. I'm like, why? But it's because our brain is so wired to, to this addictive behavior, we don't even realize this. And it's really scary when you are suddenly, like when you step outside of this world, it's really scary to see this world from the outside. And another example is like when somebody is showing me their Instagram or let's say opens their Instagram and I see these feeds, the, the, it shocks me how colorful and how just penetrating this content is when you're not used to it anymore after two years, it seems crazy that people are engaging in this activity and taking it really seriously. I mean, the type of content, the kind of the, the photos and the body postures and the kind of the, the smiles and positioning and how you kind of portray yourself on social media. And I'm not saying everyone does that, but like the, the majority of content on social media is very like self-indulging and it's from from the outside it really <laughs> seems crazy when you see this and you're like wow I used to be doing exactly the same thing I used to be polishing photos of myself and my life and I wanted to publish them in the most attractive light and when you are not when you are just 
not anymore in this bubble. When you're not in the Instagram bubble anymore, you just don't see the value of this content at all. And some somebody told me recently like, oh, you should really check out TikTok because it's really great and this content is really valuable and you can learn a lot of stuff about like, I don't know, investing or whatever. And then I was like, well, you can also learn stuff about investing if you pick up a book or go to a blog of experienced investor and learn it from there. You don't have to be subscribed to TikTok videos to be able to learn um, that stuff. So I must say that you might feel like you're going to be missing out because at this moment in time, the content that you consume seems really valuable to you and you might feel like you're going to miss out. But trust me, once you stop, it's, it's really crazy to go back. When you look at this content, you realize that that has absolutely no value and you will be even surprised why you used to be drawn to this content because you will be more in, um, in the realm of uh, real life and real colors and real faces and real bodies and real um, problems and real opportunities you will not be drawn to this content because it will feel really fake, insecure, pointless, and kind of disturbing. <laughs> so just try to do a detox of at least 30 days or longer and you will see that you are not drawn to this content anymore. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a comment and share your experience of struggles with social media or maybe you've quit already and I will be happy to hear about how you're feeling and how you managed it and how your life has improved because I'm sure it did. So please share in the comments and if you like this channel, please subscribe. Bye!